Well, good morning, church. Happy Easter. This is Craig Johnson, and I'm here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church at 24th and Chicago in South Minneapolis. I'm out in the Narthex area right now, and right through the windows, you might be able to see there's a few people invited here by our faithful Rico, who is outside right now, because they just wanted to watch the Easter service from church, but they're watching it on a big TV screen out there. We'll get started in just a few minutes.
Good morning and welcome in the name of Christ. Together we gather to create this virtual body of Christ that is our Savior's Lutheran Church as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Welcome, members, friends, visitors, people from all around. We gather and rejoice. Because we are on Facebook Live, you'll need to have access to a worship folder to be able to follow along. We won't have helpful slides shown up on your screen. You can find the worship folder in the link that was sent to you this morning on both of our Facebook pages and on our, our, our Savior's website. So I encourage you to download that or have access to it on a different screen. This morning, you'll also need a bowl of water as we give thanks for baptism and bread and wine, crackers and juice, whatever it is you have at hand as we celebrate Holy Communion. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsty earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Sovereign, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, Yahweh, omnipotent, will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine, strained clear, and God will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. God will swallow up death forever. Then Yahweh omnipotent will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of God's people will be taken away from all the earth. For Yahweh has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. This is the one we have waited for, so that we might be saved. This is Yahweh for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in God's salvation. God is still speaking. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Wonderful in our eyes. 
reading from Martin Luther King Jr.'s Letter from Birmingham Jail. I wish you had commended the Negro demonstrators of Birmingham for their sublime courage, their willingness to suffer, and their amazing discipline in the midst of the most inhuman provocation. One day, the South will recognize its real heroes. They will be the James Merediths, courageously and with a majestic sense of purpose, facing jeering and hostile mobs, and the agonizing loneliness that characterizes the life of a pioneer. They will be old, oppressed, battered Negro women, symbolized in a 72-year-old woman of Montgomery, Alabama, who rose up with a sense of dignity and with her people decided not to ride the segregated buses and responded to one who inquired about her tiredness with ungrammatical profundity. My feet is tired, but my soul is rested. They will be young high school and college students, young ministers of the gospel, and a host of their elders courageously and nonviolently sitting in at lunch counters and willingly going to jail for consciousness sake. One day the South will know that when these disinherited children of God sat down at lunch counters, they were in reality standing up for the best in the American dream and the most sacred values in our Judeo-Christian heritage. I hope this letter finds you strong in the faith. I also hope that circumstances will soon make it possible for me to meet each of you, not as an integrationist or a civil rights leader, but as a fellow clergyman and a Christian brother. Let us all hope that the dark clouds of racial prejudice will soon pass away and the deep fog of misunderstanding will be lifted from our fear-drenched communities. And in some not too distant tomorrow, the radiant stars of love and brotherhood will shine over our great nation with all their scintillating beauty. God is still speaking. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, 
for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the good news. Praise be you, Lord. Now, children, gather around close to your screen. It is so good to be with all of you on this Easter Sunday, this day, when we celebrate this good news that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. And I just shared with all of you the story about how three women come and first discover this good news. They come early in the morning to care for Jesus' dead body. And on their way to his tomb, they start talking with each other and they wonder, how are we gonna, gonna be with Jesus' body? They start realizing, you know what? This is gonna be probably impossible for us to see and touch the dead body of Jesus that we so love. Because they know that there's this big, heavy stone that's blocking the entrance of the tomb. It's so big and massive and heavy, and they know that it's impossible for them to move that stone. It would be like if I tried to move this font. Now I'm going to try. I'm going to try to move it. I can't do it. Maybe if Pastor Lori and Craig help me out, maybe, maybe we can move it together. Let's, let's give it a try. Here we go. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, oh, no, we, we just can't do it. And kids, if you were here today with us, I would ask you to help push with us. But you know what? We wouldn't be able to do it. And those women that morning, they knew they wouldn't be able to do it. They knew that no human being would be able to do it. And they discover the surprise that God, God's power, was able to move that stone away and was able to raise Jesus from the dead. This is amazing, incredible news. And we have a special word that we use to praise God for God's awesome power to bring life out of death. If you know this special word I'm talking about, can you shout it out? I think I can hear you. It's Alleluia! Yes! Maybe some of you have noticed that our Alleluia banner is back up in the sanctuary. Let's see if we can find it. And as you see it, you can shout Alleluia. Let's see. Where could it be? I'm going to bring this along. Hmm. Over here. Hmm. Where could it be? Where could it be? Oh, I see it! Hallelujah! Now, children, I know that some of you in Sunday school decorated some beautiful Alleluia banners at the beginning of Lent, and you hid them away in your homes. Well, now is the time to get those banners out. Now is the time to shout and sing Alleluia, to dance Alleluia, to move your bodies and praise God for this good news that we share in today. And in the rest of the worship service, anytime you hear an Alleluia, I want you to dance and shout and sing. Or if you don't hear Alleluias, we have some songs without Alleluias. I want you to add some in, okay? Add some alleluias in and express your joy at this amazing good news. Now let us pray. Dear God, Dear God. on this morning we say wow. On this morning we shout alleluia. Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. Help us to praise you. Help us to praise you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. <laughs> Friends, today we proclaim the news of Christ's resurrection with singing, with flowers, with boldness, with gusto, at least with as much gusto as we can without all of you here filling the pews. And we do this even as we remember that the good news first broke into the world in a very different way. Let's take a moment to reimagine our Easter proclamation according to what we read about these women who discover the empty tomb in Mark's account. Let's reimagine it as a dialogue between the young man in the tomb who greets these women and the women. The young man says to them, Alleluia! Christ is risen! And the women say, <sighs> These women are unnerved, unsettled, shocked, filled with terror and amazement. They flee from the scene fearful and silent. There doesn't seem to be a particle of their body that yet feels any joy that's yet ready to proclaim Alleluia. And that all seems quite honest, doesn't it? It feels like an honest response to discovering an empty tomb after a traumatic and brutal execution. It feels like an honest response to trying to take in something so radically new that flies in the face of everything that you've learned and know about the world. Dead bodies are supposed to stay dead. It's a fact of life, like gravity. If our communion table here started floating right now, I don't think I would shout Alleluia. I think I would be filled with some terror and amazement. And a table floating would be a trivial trick compared to the foundation-shaking, deeply radical reality that these women are encountering here. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Sometimes on Easter, I know that some of us feel like we have to fake it till we make it to ring our bells and be joyful. Easter means joy, doesn't it? Well, actually, no, it does not. Easter means that God has conquered the power of sin and death and empire, period. No particular emotional response is required as we take in that radical news. And in fact, we might feel a whole bunch of different things at once. These women's response suggests that maybe we too can allow ourselves this morning to dwell in astonishment, in speechlessness, in awe, to acknowledge just how foundation-shaking and deeply radical and, frankly, unsettling this news is. And there's even more that's unsettling about this story. In Mark's account, we don't even get a glimpse of the risen Jesus. We don't even get to hear about the women telling anybody about this news. It just stops right here. Even though we know these women must have told people at some point, because otherwise we wouldn't have this story and we wouldn't be here today. It's kind of unsatisfying, isn't it? Don't you want to see these women? Let this truth sink in? Tell all the men what they saw? Don't you want to see them get to Galilee where they see the risen Christ? I know I do. So why is Mark doing this, leaving us with this unfinished ending? Perhaps we're meant to see in this story the deep truth that this good news of resurrection breaks into our very unfinished lives. So much in our lives are unfinished. We are living through an unfinished trial of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd. And even when that trial is finished, 
Whatever the verdict is, we know our work to dismantle white supremacy and work towards racial justice will be unfinished. Oh, we will have a long way still to go. And our lives are unfinished as we wait for a meaningful job, as we wait for healing in our lives, as we wait for repair in our relationships, as we wait to be back in person as a church community. Our lives are so unfinished. And here's the good news today. In the unfinished suspense and mess of our lives, God's good news of resurrection breaks in, announcing that God, too, is unfinished with us. God's love and life are never finished with us. And all we can do, like these women, is journey forward, trusting that this testimony is true. We can lean into trusting the young man who announces today, Jesus is risen and has gone ahead of you. We can trust that Jesus has gone ahead of us with more life in store for us in this broken world, more life than we can imagine. We can trust the vision that the prophet, of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah gives us today. One day, God will lay out a grand feast for all peoples, and it will be a feast of love, of family in the widest sense, People of every color, creed, and culture gathered around, reconciled in peace. And God will wipe away the tears from all faces. And we will dance and rejoice together. The shroud cast over all peoples of death, white supremacy, abuse, oppression, exploitation of all kinds, these will be destroyed. The fog will be lifted from even our own eyes, like a divine cataract removal surgery. And we will be able to see, as King describes, the radiant stars of love and siblinghood in all their scintillating beauty. What does it look like if we live trusting that these testimonies are true in the midst of our unfinished and unsettled lives. King gives us a beautiful vision of what this looks like in the witness of this 72-year-old woman who participated in, the, participated in the Montgomery bus boycott. For over a year with the black community, this woman refused to ride on buses, and instead she did a whole lot of walking as she struggled with her community for desegregation in the busing system. When asked if she was tired from all this walking, this woman said, My feet is tired, but my soul is rested. When this woman joined the bus boycott, you bet in her wisdom she knew well that the work of justice and healing would be unfinished, whether they won or whether they lost in their push for desegregation. But she gave herself over to hope. Her soul was resting in that vision. Her spirit was seated at that table that the prophet Isaiah describes, that table of God with all God's family gathered around. She was able to feast there in her spirit even as she gave her body over to the tiring and unfinished work of justice. As we seek to bear witness to Christ's resurrection, in our unfinished lives, may our spirits find rest and renewal in the vision of a restored and redeemed humanity, a vision that we glimpse even here at our own feasting table. And may we also feel unsettled by this invitation to really step into this story. Jesus is ahead of us. And God is not finished with us. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. responses to this next hymn, you want to sing, God is still speaking. 
Let's try that together. God is still speaking. And then your next response is, listen and draw near. Listen and draw near. All right, here's how the refrain sounds. Alive in the risen Christ and the joy of this Easter morning, we bring our prayers before the steadfast love of God. Praise to God for the power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the strength of your love. Bless the ministries of this congregation. Send each of us out to be the good news in all our words and actions. Gracious God, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Praise to God for the joy of life in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your vitality as it springs forth and blossoms. Show us the beauty and purity of your land, air, and water. Cultivate our care for your abundant creation. Gracious God, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Praise to God for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw people together from all walks of life. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. In our city, 
Help us to be your agents for equity, agitators for justice, ambassadors for inclusion. Gracious God, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Praise to God for the hope of the resurrection. Vaccinate us all against disease, fear, and misunderstanding. Bless those dispensing hope-filled shots and care. Comfort those who grieve, those who are sick or suffering, and those in tender vulnerability. In our community, we give joy for the birth of Margaret, and we lift up in care Marky, Paul, Diane, Allison and Jared, the Lewis family as they grieve the death of Aunt Marilyn, all those who were touched by the remarkable Judy Halverson, and all the individuals we each hold in our hearts. Gracious God, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. In the new hope of Easter, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with those around you in the comments and whatever creative manner you can find. Peace be with you. And now we pause to consider the abundant blessings God pours out for our well being and also to consider what portion we set aside to dedicate to the ministry of this congregation. Thank you so much for your ongoing faithful support. And we also prepare our tables now for Holy Communion. love you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table receive our lives and the gifts we offer abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child Jesus Christ amen the Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood and for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey and for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ and for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence, and let the people say, Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Joining with the people of God throughout the ages, let us pray with confidence. Our mother, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat and be satisfied. And as you prepare now to serve one another or receive communion in your home, hear these words for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign. Amen. sent out with great joy and I have one announcement. Next Sunday all of us are invited to worship together with the whole Minneapolis Area Synod as they facilitate worship for all of us. Watch in your email and on Facebook for the links as they usually come out and we can join together in that service. And now God sends us with a blessing. Our glorious God, grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, bless you now and forever. Amen. Two weeks after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I could not let Easter go by without speaking of this tragic event that was on all our minds. The hymn tries to see God's love winning over tragedy and all the suffering of the world. Christ is alive. We sing together. <clears throat> Good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen.